Two and a half years, you go from 25,000 yeah. to 600,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. with some big losses. Good to see you. Absolutely, man. It's pretty pretty crazy. You you came to LA and like, this is, especially like, you know, this is where it all started for me. Um, hardcore in this office and the one across the street that I showed you on the way here. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, it's beautiful. I love the dedication. You see that hard work has paid off. Yeah. I didn't lead you astray. Yeah, man. You know, it's just uh, like, what, what do you call it? Um, I've had like a life changing experience the past couple of years. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, I don't know. Right now, I'm, I'm kind of shocked a little bit still. It's still uh, surreal. Listen, you put in a lot of time studying. You laid the groundwork. And then people are always surprised, like, how tough it is at first. And then how like the clouds part and you're like, whoa, stuff really can compound faster than you ever think. Like it's it's harder in the beginning and then it's easier if you do the hard work. So people, most people are not comfortable with like, you know, it's, everyone wants like a nice gradual progression, right? Where it's like, oh, okay, it's a little hard, but then it gets easier, it gets easier. Like that, that doesn't work. At the beginning, it's like a giant freaking wall. You have to chip away at that wall for months, if not years. And then you, you know, you're still at guaranteed profits, but it becomes a lot easier. Yeah, you know, um, it's like that that compounded knowledge. You know, it, it really. I think uh, with your stuff, you had a lot of examples of like Gritani, um, Crook, uh, and then all the new guys. I saw. I, I had, you know, I saw all their their development early on and their success. You know, like Jack, Kyle. Um, all the guys there with six figures or more, you know, they were a little bit, they were ahead of me by a year or two. And in just a year or two, like I went from basically nothing to more than six figures, you know? Where are you at right now? Let's date this. Um, Around 600,000. 600,000 yeah. in profits. Yeah. And this is November, 2022. November 2022, yeah. When did we, we last talked in October, 2021? Yeah, I was up a quarter million. So that was 250K. Now I'm up 600K. So I, I've definitely improved. Like the last time I spoke to you, this office had like, bare walls i don't know if you saw the microphone was all messed up we did a podcast it was like I but then I, I i saw since watching your stuff like crazy you always kept it real and sometimes your mic would be off 100 it's all about the content I couldn't care less. yeah so like when people were asking me in the beginning oh your microphone this i was like man it's just about the content all right yeah. like and i got that from you i got that from you i'm like you know, as so you should people complain about a little bit like this i was like yo this is life-changing information. Focus on what matters. People are like, oh, like your button is undone. Like, yeah. shut up, <laughs> you little wusses. Like, you're focusing on the dumbest stuff. And this is social media. This is like the, you know, the world right now where they everyone complains about little stuff. And it's like you miss the big picture focusing on all this minutia, which doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, um, and I think... When I, when I was learning in, in that other building across the street, that shared space, um, and I was going over the videos, I people saw me studying and they'd be like, is that Tim Sykes? Oh man, you know, you're, they're always pessimistic. And I was like, man, it's just about the content. I just want the content. They were saying, oh yeah, that guy's a douche, that guy's this. And I was like, man, Scam, it's just the content. Yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, 100%. That. I was like, man, it's just the content. And I already knew. I was like, I, this is, you know, if I study this, there's so many examples that this way. <laughs> I was fighting with a promoter today on Twitter and they're like, I know you, you're a fraud, you're a liar. I was like, here's the, here's the chart pattern. Here's the seven step framework. Here are all the tickers that fit the framework. What am I lying about? Go. And he's like, I know what you're doing. You're lying. I was like, no, this is the platform is yours. Tell me what I'm lying about. This is the chart pattern. These are the tickers. What's nah, the lie? I and they, know. they some, can't some respond. People, you know, some, but they can't. There's literally no response. Anytime. It's just like, you're a fraud. You're a liar. I hate you. <laughs> but I yeah. show you the data. I show you the charts. Like, what am, what am I lying about? Yeah. And, it, it, you know, it was pretty straightforward. I, I got into the challenge. Science. Yeah, it's not rocket science. And you go through all the videos one by one. You know, there's a little star, one through five. I would mark the videos as, re as listened to with with the stars yeah if i didn't have a star on there that means i didn't do Good. it and i gotta go see it nice. gotta, and then um you know i was telling you i didn't trade in that office because i was so distracted i think uh people were like trying to see what i'm doing How, you can't trade like that you know it's, it's too but that actually helped you because then you you were forced to study before you traded yes. yeah so it's actually good yeah, yeah so anybody absolutely. watching and this, i didn't have money 
Anybody watching this, if you don't have money, if you have distractions, good. Now you have no excuses not to study. Yeah, yeah, I, you, yeah you nailed it right there. So, like, I, I realize I can't trade. This is too stressful to trade, but I can study, and I don't have any money anyway, so let me study. And you got yeah, nothing to lose. Yeah, and then some people... This is Jack in Titanic. Remember Jack? You remember? Did you watch Titanic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where he's like, when you got nothing, you got nothing to lose, even though he's a yeah. fictional character and he died in it. But, like, in real life, it ends up well. Yeah, yeah it did. And, um, yeah, some people... You know, it's funny. Someone contacted me. Now those people, they see, like, my podcast. They see, oh, my God. this guy. <laughs> Surprise! It, it's it real. Worked. So, so one of those guys contacted me and said, hey, David, I have this amount of money. What should I invest in? I said, man, you should just study. start with these videos and study, you know? And, yourself. He, and he said he doesn't want to do it. He still doesn't want to do it. You so. Listen, some people will make every excuse in the book why they can't study. Like This is why we weed out people. Like I have a lot of people who are like, oh, make me rich. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to make you rich. I'm going to make you educated. Then you make yourself rich with that education. But they, so many people are like, oh, I can't study. I got kids. I got a job. Like If you want it bad enough, you'll study. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. You know, um, All your successful students, they all wanted it bad. You know, They, they decided this is going to take a long time. Let me put in the work and uh stay the course you know what i mean um but like you they're surprised at how it pays off like jack kellogg you came to the conference in miami yeah jack kellogg was up on stage and he's like you guys have no idea how much work i put in to make 10 million and it's like yeah no shit buddy you just made 10 million everybody wants to make 10 million he put in the work but then it paid off so much quicker like you can study you know physics you can be a doctor you can be a lawyer we're talking a career of decades and you still won't make 10 million so like the upside is so huge in trading if you put in the time in the beginning. Yeah, and um, okay, so I was I, I'm, I'm an architect, and I went I came to LA to do architecture school ten years ago, and or more than ten years ago now, and um, that took like a ten years to get to be like a junior architect. Yeah, and then when I got to trading, man, when you came on the screen on YouTube and someone pointed me out. I, I and I investigated on it by watching all your free content on YouTube. I, yeah. I downloaded them and I watched them all. Yeah. And um, I was like, wow, what an opportunity! I can switch careers, and if I tr treat this serious, I can do like. And I know my work ethic. That's all up. That's on you. And um, and how many years ago was this? 2006, 17. So five years. Yeah. And now you're at what 650,000? 600, yeah, but I didn't even take a. I mean, I always took it serious, but I, I uh, 2019 is when I started putting so three in years. time. Yeah. But you also got lucky with a crazy bull market in 2020 and 2021. So, like, not yeah. all years are equal, right? Like, so some no. people might start, like, hey, I started in 2010, but then, like, they give up, like, 2017 or 2018 because it's slow, and then they miss the promised land of 2020 and 2021. Yeah. So, like, it's, you can't compare every year equivalently, right? Like, they're not all equal years. But the key is, you don't know when the next mania or bubble is going to be. All you can do is control your preparation. And the question is, will you be prepared for that mania? And you were prepared in 2020. Yeah, 2020. and you, you mentioned that a, a lot of times, you know. Because um, the weed mania, I missed it. And I was like, oh, man. And then the, the Bitcoin mania or crypto mania before, I think, I missed it. Yeah. And then, like, 2019, I was studying. I was like like crazy and then 2020 uh april is when i started with the over pdt account nice. i was under pdt until crazy before may 2020 amazing you know so two and a half years you go from twenty five thousand yeah. to six hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah even yeah. with some big losses yeah you know uh uh yeah the big losses you, you go on a streak and um you, you get, get too cocky, cocky you know uh, <laughs> what's that like word you... what yeah you get too cocky arrogant arrogance you know um and you, you think you're untouchable you're walking around you know <laughs> thinking oh i'm rich now you know <laughs> i remember this feeling but you see this is this is what you're learning right so like you miss the weed mania you miss the crypt crypto mania but then you think that you screwed up by missing it but that like i've had, lately i've been saying like you have a giant checklist of like 900 things missing a mania and feeling guilty is a key checklist because that is what is going to inspire you to study harder. If you don't miss a mania, you don't really know the opportunity. But when you miss it, you're like, damn, I should have been ready. And that actually helps you. So missing a mania, I encourage everyone to be unprepared in the beginning. Don't take it. You're, no, very few people take it seriously in the beginning because they just don't understand the upside within a few years. Like even with you, like you still can't believe your success within a few years. Right? Yeah. Um, 
That's what I'm saying. Like architecture took me more than ten years to do, and I was still and a you're junior getting nowhere. architect. Yeah, yeah, because I still need to get licensed, and that was going to take another three years. So it was with trading. It it was a life changing opportunity for me because it's not you know without the mania, but it's not linear, right? So like no. almost every job, almost every pursuit on the planet is like you know you have to put in the time, years if not decades to become a master because this isn't rocket science, but because there's a high barrier to entry knowledge-wise, not money-wise, anybody can trade, but knowledge-wise, there's a huge cliff that you have to climb in the beginning that most people don't go over. Once you're over that cliff, like once you put in all the time studying, you're sleeping here on the yoga mat, like you grinded, you put in the time. Roland did this, he was yeah. studying in his law office. Jack did this, he had strep and mono, he's still studying. Mariana didn't trade for a year, she studied from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So like, there's example after example after example of people who are like, okay, let me commit to my studying. And then everyone capitalized when there was so much opportunity. Now 2022 is a tougher year to learn, but you're still learning lessons. Like you said, even when you made a lot and then you got too cocky, you thought you were untouchable. Now you don't think you're untouchable. Now you no. did another check off that checklist. When you say, okay, I had to, what was your biggest loss? 100K. In a day or two? Uh, like two days, yeah. How'd you feel? Uh, like, I, like Mike Tyson just beat me up to sleep, you know? Right? It's like, all the wind's gone out. Yeah, but how, yeah. how many months ago was this? Two months ago. But and now you're getting off the mat. You've recovered from yeah. your brain oh. injuries. Like Yeah, yeah. I, I, I recovered like 60% of it. You know? But now you're more aware of the risks, right? Yeah. With like with great power comes great responsibility. Jack, Kyle, and I were on the boat in the Miami conference, and we were talking about this. Where it's like they worked so hard to make a few million dollars, but now they're betting bigger size, and it's such a slippery slope, right? Like before, to go from like twenty thousand to fifty thousand, or fifty thousand to one hundred thousand, yeah. so many little trades. But if you put two or three million on a trade and you're wrong, five hundred thousand gone like that. So it's you know, stairs on the way up and then an elevator straight down. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, and I know all their stories, man. I've watched, and that's like a big part of like me grinding the way I did is because I had the examples like, okay, this is the this is what they did. This is they were successful. I got to do that. Yeah. I gotta, and then like when I would hear Jack grinding, and I know he took it to a crazy level. I was like, man, I'm grinding this hard. I, I imagine Jack grinding even harder. If I grinded 22 hours a day, I, I was imagining Jack did 23 and a you half You don't want to burn out, though. That's one thing, right? Like, yeah. especially in 2022 where people get discouraged because there's not as many great plays. And there's like, like you know, like we were talking about Evan Shunk where he's at 750000 But this year he's basically flat and he's now traveling more. And I was like, yeah. yo, props to you. Go travel enjoy the money that you've made a little bit you know like why yeah. work so hard if you're never going to enjoy it yeah i was actually talking to them the other day uh we're exactly that you know i was and i'm i'm planning to go travel myself you know what i mean some more where I are traveled, you gonna go uh japan nice. india Beautiful. and then korea and then back be careful with india i got food poisoning twice there oh yeah one time i was like <laughs> adventurous it was my own fault second time i was like i don't want to get food poisoning i'm only eating in this five-star hotel still got food poisoning so like be careful in India. Japan, love it. Try to go during cherry blossom season, which is March or April. It's magical. Uh huh. I remember, you, yeah, you you did those videos of uh, trading. I don't know if you remember them, the YouTube videos. Yeah. You did like some some kind of skit. Yeah, like I, do all, I do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah dressed yeah. as a samurai. <laughs> you know, I was the last Jewish samurai. Yeah. Let's make sure this is recording. Look at it real quick. Let's see. Let's see. Keep it going. Is yeah, it it's still going. I, I always have fear where I'm like, yeah, oh, actually, it's, that's happened it, like, to me before. I know. That's why I'm like, yo, we need to we need to keep this just in case. Yeah. So it's recorded. Yeah, it is. Keep but, this in there. Don't even but, edit. But this. yeah, no, absolutely. Actually, I don't edit anybody. It's very Good. two seconds off the beginning, and that's it. But um, but yeah, man, just all all the examples. So I read this book. Um, it's called Mindset, and uh, they go over two examples of two baseball teams from um. Curacao, the island, yeah. and Aruba. And they both had these two baseball players. One was Andrew Jones. You remember Andrew Jones? Atlanta Braves? Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, so, and there was another one. And Andrew Jones became successful in Curacao and went to the Modern World Series, Gold Glove, Hall of Famer, whatever. Yeah. And every kid in Curacao has an example of, of Andrew Jones to be like a baseball nice. They have a culture now yeah, of baseball. Yeah. They, they talk baseball at dinner. All this because of Andrew Jones in the 90s. And then, so Aruba, the same thing. They had a, a 
pitcher that was a top prospect, going to be like the next crazy Sandy Koufax, yeah. everything. And he ended up being an alcoholic and failed, and like nobody talks about baseball there. So you need heroes, but at the same time, you have to realize that some heroes just like aren't great. That's why like, when I created the Millionaire Challenge, I was like, I don't know who's going to take this seriously, but it's not going to be one or two people. And now the speed at which the new millionaires are being created, because now you guys have so many examples. Yes, exactly. So now it's like, wait, he did it, he did it, he did it, she did it. Like the more examples, and now there's like a path. And the cool thing, I, I don't know if you've seen this, I was playing around on my challenge webinar the other day, I was like, you guys know that there's like a chat archive in the challenge, like you can change the URL to any date and you can see what was said the entire chat room the entire day. So I was like, I did this, I think it was like November 16th, 2022, a few days ago, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I changed it from November 16th, 2022 to November 16th, 2012, a decade ago. Within like three seconds, you're, it's all popped up. Like you can see Tim Grittani, and this is when Tim Grittani had like five thousand dollars to his name. Now he's got fifteen million. Like you can literally go back and see every single step. That's the cool thing. Like with baseball yeah. players, okay, you can see their game, but you can't really see their practices because they're not recorded. Yeah, this is everything is recorded. Chat room, webinars, DVD, video lessons, and it's like if you spend the time, because it is time consuming, you can piece everything back together and it's fascinating. Yeah, it is, and um, that's crazy, man. So you can see Tim Grittani starting out with just making $10 wins, $20 wins. You can go back by the day and you can cross-reference his trades, right? So like you can see a big trade, like he had a $300,000 day on CYDY, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, how are you gonna celebrate? And he's like, can I give a challenge webinar? I was like, I love you. I yes. remember that, yeah. And he gave a challenge webinar, how he made the 300,000. But that's just a big day. He also has many small days and he used to be in the chat room all the time. Now he's got a family with kids, he's like a busy life. But back then, like you can see a decade's worth of his chat commentary with the day. And because you're looking back, you can compare it to his trades, you can compare it to charts. It's fascinating. Yeah, you know, and you had Grittani, and you had Ducks, and you had all these other guys that came up. Roland, Mark Crook, up. Jack yeah. Kellogg, Matt Monaco, Dom, Roland. Huddy, all of them. Yeah, I, I, I interviewed Roland um, not a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And I remember him doing the interview with you. Like, he had, like, a bandana on. And yeah. he was saying, yeah, I, put, I studied, like, 20 hours a day. Yeah. And I was, like, grinding, grinding, grinding. And, and um, people would make fun yeah. of him when he got up from his desk because he was in, like, a legal office like this. And yeah. the other lawyers were like making fun of him, like you're, you're studying penny stocks. It's a yeah, no, I, I heard it all. I heard that's why I, that's why this one, this office. You're in a me legal office. This is you. Wait, I can close the door. You need a bandana, like... man. Don't close the door. <laughs> Get the hate. I I love the hate. I love the doubt because that for me it pushes me no, more. No, absolutely. For me, man. Um, and that's why I like Jack on your conference. He mentions like the naysayers. On like it's almost like a like a superhero character. You get all their energy. You know, there's a great that. book by David Goggins. Have you read yeah, this? Yeah, I have Can't an audio. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's working on a second book. But, like, he was, like, abused. Like, he had a terrible life. And he was like, wait a minute. Like, that didn't destroy me. I'm strong. Like, he calls it mental calluses, right? Like, yeah. if you're working, like, manual labor and your hands hurt every day. But, like, then after a while, you get calluses and you can do manual labor better. This is not manual labor. It's much easier. But it's still, like, if you have a loss. Like, when you lost 100000 it sucked, it's terrible, but you learned what not to do. Now you're trading more conservative. You've already made back half of it yeah. in a much more conservative and risk adjusted way. Yeah, I analyzed, so that loss and all, all my losses, I analyzed the hell out of them. So yeah, I made a lot of changes. And that's made that. you better, right? So oh, that, yeah, yeah. that $100,000 loss is gonna make you millions in the long run. Just like my million dollar yeah. loss on Cygnus, I personally lost 500,000, my hedge fund lost a million, the press dragged me through the mud, it was terrible. That has made me millions ever since because I never want that to happen again. Yeah. I don't have any big losses anymore. Yeah, by the way, your book, and we covered this in the last last year uh, on the podcast, like, your book is so underrated, man. I appreciate you know? it. Um, and working I got, on I another book, working oh, on another sick. one. Oh, um, sick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. But like, you give it away for free, although I got the audio, the audio was like 12 bucks. Yeah. And it's. So good. You like that guy who's, whose voice it is? Yeah, I tried to silky smooth. I tried to do it myself, but like, oh, you tried <laughs> when you do audiobooks, like you have to say the word, and like it's such a weird thing because like you can't breathe, 
you can't like say any other word. Like you have to go word for word. So I was trying to do word for word then I'd screw up and I was like, ah, oh, shit. And then, but you can hear me say shit. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And then like, <laughs> like I, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. So I paid this guy, Brett Barry, I think was his name. He does all these audio books. Yeah, I've heard him before for sure. It was just funny <laughs> that he was like saying my words and I wanted to do it myself, but I, you know. But, um, but no, it's just like that 1999 mania you know, I, I did a podcast with Tommy Knoxville the other day. Yeah. I just, I told you before we got yeah. here. Um, and he was part of the 99 mania where he was a grocery boy. He did grocery bags. Yeah. And, and he turned a thousand into 30,000 during 1999, 2000. And then he lost it all. Yeah. And he said, this time in this mania, I know this is a mania. Because if a grocery boy made a thousand or 30 before. Yeah. And the grocery boys are doing it again. Yeah. The Uber drivers, all those guys. And now he can do it in a risk adjusted way. Exactly. So he decided to study. But then you, I, I told him, you, so Sykes was part of that mania too. And he kept his money yeah. because he stopped or like you were learning a short sell because you, you realized it, the, so it wasn't working anymore. I was buying OTC winners. I was up 700000 my first four months of the year 2000. I remember this very clearly. And I started extrapolating. I'm like, okay, if I can make 700000 every four months and then I'm betting bigger so maybe I can make a million in four months and then two years from now I can make four million in four. Like I was out of my mind. I didn't understand that I was part of like one of the biggest bubbles in history. Yeah. But I always, and back then, even to this day, Whenever I'm in a supernova, when I'm in a play, I usually sell too soon. I, I just, I, you know, I like to, to grab the profits. Back then, same thing. So I always sold too soon. Like the Y2K plays, they would go from like five to like 200, 10 to like 150. And I would ride it from like 15 to like 25 or like 30 to like 40. Like <laughs> that was just me. Then when they disappeared, I, the last eight months of the year 2000, I lost 10,000. Cause I, I kept trying to look for breakouts, but nothing was working. And I was like clamped down and I wanted to save my money. Then that forced me to go into short selling where it was the same pattern, just later in the pattern. Instead of the front side, it was the back side. So I didn't lose much. In fact, I had to lose more later. I, I regret that. I wish I had lost in the year 2000. If I had lost big in the year 2000 with a smaller account, that would have protected me from losing bigger when I fell in love with Cygnus E transactions in the technology in 2006. People shouldn't be afraid of losses, like gigantic losses. You want to experience the gigantic losses early in your career so you can learn what not to do because then it'll help you in your career later on. I worry about somebody who doesn't have any big losses because then they're just they a ticking yeah. time bomb. That's, uh, it's inevitable. They don't have the, the mental awareness. They don't have the risk adjusted strategy. Now you do. That $100,000, congratulations. Oh, you. you lost $100,000. You're better. <laughs> And yeah. you've already made some of it back. And you have the lifelong lesson. So win-win. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I learned a lot from that. And also, you know, just the self-reflection that comes after that. It's like, man, I, I came a long way. Um, just two years ago, I, I was completely broke. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I lost 100 grand. But I did make a... You know, I looked at all the traders this year. Yeah. They're, you know, it's and it's a big difference from no last year. No one's having a record year. Yeah, and I was I was having a record year. So like I just got too cocky, you know, and sizing up, sizing up. So eventually, you know, it's gonna come. It catches up to you. It, you can't cheat your way to success, right? You need to have this lesson. And a lot of people think like, no, I don't need a big loss. Like, yeah, you do. Because now it's totally that emotional intelligence that you gain from that six figure loss, that's priceless. Like if I had zero big losses and someone offered me a life changing education for a hundred grand. In this weird analogy, I would say, yes, I would take it because I know how valuable this loss and this lesson is going to be in the long run. That hundred grand that you lost, it's literally a multi-million dollar profit for you in the long run. It's weird to think about. Yeah. I, uh, a a friend of mine um, mentioned that to me. He's a very successful trader. So like, that's another thing. I, I, I've With your community, I was able to start a network and now with the podcast from your community. Yeah. I, I got the whole podcast idea from Matt Monaco. Yeah. Matt Monaco started the, the him and Bryce. The him and Bryce interviewed me long before they yeah. joined my challenge. And to I was learn, like, to learn more. Correct. And that's what I, do. I did. I, I wanted to learn more. This isn't rocket science, guys. No, yeah. Make sure it's still recording. Make yeah. sure. Make sure this is this is money content. What yeah, it's at? still recording. How 20, long? Is Twenty-four this? minutes. Good. 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 Yeah. So um, I was like, man, uh, and like. After seeing all the example, the good examples of success, I was like, okay, so I need to just get all the knowledge I can, you know. And Matt Monaco, I saw him go from like a few thousand to a million or more. Yeah. 
So, you know, when he was doing the the crash course or whatever it's called. The 30-day boot camp. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. was at 50,000. Yeah, I saw him. I was like, man, this guy is like up 50,000. He's making a course. And then, and then like, a few, mo like, few months pass or six months pass. He's up, he's up a million dollars. We didn't even know he was going to be a successful <laughs> no, student. Yeah. We just, we used him for, like, the 30-day boot camp because was he's organized. I'm not organized. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. too much stuff going on. And I was like, he studied a lot. So I was like, okay, come up with, like, a basic framework of my stuff. He studied all my stuff and he gave me a framework and I went back and like tailored the framework a little bit and then we just recorded and we talked about my lessons but in an organized manner. Yeah. And he edited it and because we did the course it actually helped him understand everything yeah. as a whole and then he went from 50 grand now he's at 2 so million. So I saw that I'm like oh man so I really got to like get as much knowledge as I can. The pod he, he did the podcast. He he's organized. Yeah. I got to get organized. I got to I got to make podcast is e it's not easy, but like you it's you can start a podcast. I think everybody everybody should do a podcast and that way you learn structure, you're uh, you know, made aware of all different traders. Like I see how many traders you have on your podcast. It's great. Yeah. You're getting these amazing conversations. All you're basically doing is talking with traders, which you should be doing anyways. You're recording it to help other people. But because Matt Monaco inspired you, because Roland Wolf inspired you, you're learning the proper framework. And guess what? When you apply the habits of successful people, you become successful. Yeah. It's and, funny how that works. And, and another thing with, with Monaco, he, they, and he started a podcast, or not him, or it's with Steady Trade, The Twist, yeah. him, yeah. Jack, Kyle, and Mari. Like, and Mari, they yeah. would do, uh, they weren't up a million dollars yet. No. And they would do these re reviews. And I was like, man, so like the framework, you know, you just, you just gotta, you know, and not do it, do what they do, but like do it in your own way and do it more. The more, more you review your trades, the more you review other successful students and other successful traders trades, the more you talk with other successful traders, you get this whole understanding of where the opportunity is and where the angles are. And we're all different, right? Like you gravitated towards short selling. I've gotten away from short selling because frankly, as a teacher, it's very dangerous just for newbies. I'm not saying short selling doesn't work. It clearly does. But for newbies, like people with like two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000, I used to have like these short sales and I would like nail a pump and I would, you know, make like 30, 50, 70%, whatever. There weren't that many shares available to short. I think there's more shares to short now because there's more demand. But even when I would nail a pump, even when there were shares of short, I would get like five or 10 students canceling. And I was like, I just nailed this pump. I was like, it's dead on. And they're like, no, sorry. Short selling is like confusing. I don't want to do it. So I, would, I was like, wait a minute. This, this strategy isn't good for my teaching business. So I got away from it. Yeah. Well, for me. Um, but you're not into teaching. You're in this for you, which yeah, is good. Well, I, you know, I decided early on when, when I saw those old videos, you, you have a ton of like. This must be like 10,000 hours worth of material. Yeah, so like I saw as many as I could, probably 70,000 hours worth. Who knows? Yeah. But, um, you know, you, you covered a lot of short selling early on. And I decided for myself early on, I was like, I'm going to focus on one thing. And that's short selling cool. from early on. And then, you know, you mentioned a lot in the, for, I mean, it's crazy how it's still 2022. Now the bear market's coming. But you were saying for a long time, we've had a five-year bull run, six-year bull run, yeah, yeah. 10-year bull run. I was run. too early. You know, my warnings. It's like, you know, it's like, and you were short selling back then. And, and then I was like, you know what, we're going to have a bear market eventually. So like with my newbie mindset, I was like, you know, I, let me just learn short selling. It's going to be good for the long term. Yeah, it is. And, um, and you know, watching Michael Good and Gratani. Well, Gratani was my main example. I was like, man, this guy made a million dollars from fifteen hundred yeah. and, and ten thousand from his parents borrowed. Yeah. Um, I have around the same amount, so I emulated. I I modeled it after that. Beautiful. And I was like, you know, I'm just like Bruce Lee does, mastered yeah. one kick a million times yeah. rather than a whole bunch. Hundred percent. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna do that. And then like, you know, if I was starting out now, I, I would. I, it's it's tough, you know, because uh, it's crowded. There's yeah, it's a crowded. lot of yeah, shorts. It was a lot different back then. So that creates squeezes like eyelag. Yeah. It wasn't even a good great short setup. No, and no, no. so blue many blue. short sellers, like good short sellers, like Michael Good lost like six hundred grand, like not just on eyelag, but HKD also. Like you're having yeah. these these black swans that should theoretically only happen like once every decade, but they're happening like every few weeks. Yeah, there's too too many short sellers now. There's too many short sellers. There's a lot of locates that people gravitate. They all want, you know, we're human beings. We all like, you know, we ever go to like to a baseball game or soccer game, someone scores a goal. 
99% of the arena screens. Yeah. It's like when short sellers, one yeah. short goes up, yeah, 99% yeah. of short sellers want Yeah, yeah, of course. You know? And that's why I got out, because it's so crowded and it creates, it changes the, the risk dynamics. Because now there's too many shorts, there's a lot of borrows, so a lot of shorts are borrowing, which is fantastic, but then if they're all in the same stock, and especially for me, because I show every trade publicly, and promoters like hated me for it, so every time I would like short a promo, they would all like try to spike it. Did you, I don't know if you watched the video where I said like- I've, I've watched Shaquille Neal, Justin Bieber, uh, you had a few of them, yeah, yeah. No, but this is they the craziest. Out. So there was, <laughs> this was crazy. There was once when I was on Skype and I got added to a Skype group. I don't know if I told you this, but this uh -huh. is really relevant here. And I got added to this Skype group and it was called oh, like, they deleted you right away. Yes, it was called that. payers and like payers and like pumpers and pays. I don't know, whatever. Right? Like it's like companies that pay and then like pumpers who promote. And I clicked it and I saw everyone talking like, hey, I'll offer you like 3 million shares for, you know, a two week promotion. And I just saw it for like 30 seconds. And I was like, it's like someone like peeling back like a layer. Yeah. And I was like, what? And then someone said Sykes is in there and they're like, get yeah. him out of there. And they kicked me yeah, out. But like, this one, yeah. so this helped me understand if I'm shorting that group and other groups like it, they're all like, yo, Sykes is shorting, let's squeeze the bastard. Cause they know my rule yeah. number one is cut losses quickly. So they could just squeeze me out. I'm gonna cut losses quickly. So by shorting against promoters is a very dangerous thing for me. So now I've learned to ride the pumps. I don't trust them, but I ride them higher. Yeah, I've seen that firsthand. So, so last year I spent the whole year in Puerto Rico. I'm gonna go back eventually pretty soon. But um, I saw one guy in there, he wrote a report. He's a big short seller, yeah. big short seller. Yeah. He wrote a report, put it out. And Stock the spiked. Zach Morris promoter put on Twitter, yeah. squeeze him hard. Yeah, yeah. And he got squeezed yeah, of so hard, so nasty. Short squeezes are tough, especially with like Reddit. Like, you know, what was his name? Uh, Citroen Research yeah. basically got out of short selling. Yeah, he, and he's, like, right. he's like, he's like, because he didn't want to fight the mob. And then yeah. he tried going long and he sucked at it. He should go back to short yeah, selling. Yeah, yeah. I think he has now. Yeah, so short selling well, on 2016, 17, before that, it was a lot easier. You know, it was, there was nobody. When things get too crowded, right? Like where you hear everyone making so much money in crypto and then the whole crowd's coming to crypto and then it drops 70%. Yeah. Like when you hear about too many people making too much money too quickly, that's the time to go opposite. Yeah, um, and that's, you know, so I think John F. Kennedy's dad, Joe Kennedy, Joe Kennedy, yeah. he, he was from my. He's a former a, manipulator. Yeah, so he became this SEC a, commissioner. This, I learned he this outlawed with, all of his all yeah, the tricks yeah, you, that made him You know rich. the story. I learned this doing the podcast. You know, someone told me a, a hedge fund manager yeah. I interviewed. He he said, uh, "So Joe, Joe Kennedy, right? Joe Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, Joe Kennedy was like the he was head manipulator. Head manipulator. He would organize groups to do pumps. Yeah, and then dump it on people back like in the nineteen twenties. Yeah. yeah, the Roaring Twenties. Yeah. And then they didn't have regulation back then. You know, uh, people were taking money out of their credit cards and cash and investing in the stocks, and he would organize people. And yeah. so then the, he was like the first head of the SEC. So then he became SEC commissioner and he outlawed everything that made him so rich. And yeah. it was like, wait a minute. And so now their thinking is like the Kennedy curse because all the Kennedys die in very mysterious circumstances. It's kind of like karma, where like, guess what? Your father got very rich by doing very evil things. Now yeah. there's a whole curse on the family. And he's the one, I think he had the quote, uh, if the shoe shine boy is giving stock tips, it's yeah. the time to get out. Yeah, 100%. And this is and, the same thing, yeah. like where everyone thinks like crypto is a new thing, NFTs is a new thing, and that's right before everything collapses. Yeah, you know, uh, I remember 2020, things are shut. This is LA. LA was crazy. You think anywhere COVID was bad, LA was, it was like ex crazy. Yeah. So you go outside, uh, I used to go to this French coffee shop every now and then. Everything is shut down. There's like tumbleweeds going down the yeah. street. And yet the market is ripping. Yeah. <laughs> and you go into Uber, Uber drivers are getting unemployment. You can't even get an Uber. But the Uber drivers, they're, they're like, they're all- um, They have Robin Hood accounts. Yeah, they're all, ro they're still buying stock with have, their unemployment. Because they and have they unemployment, they got stimulus. <laughs> and so you can make a whole case that the whole run up from 2020 to 2022 was all stimulus, all yeah. extra liquidity, but it wasn't based on business fundamentals. And this is what short sellers say, like, wait a minute, everything's getting ridiculous valuations, but business isn't growing that well. Like, it's nothing's that great. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of online companies benefited, like Zoom and Peloton, because everyone was home. So those businesses actually did take off, but now those stocks have crashed now that the quarantine and the pandemic is over.
and, and yeah, you know, a lot of short sellers lost a lot uh, during that time because like nothing made sense. And I know because like when I was coming from architecture, I, like I went, I went to the top architecture school, whatever. Yeah. I thought I was I, hubris, right? I was like, oh man, I can do this. This is, it makes sense. You know, a short selling company is a fraud or whatever. Just yeah. short sell. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's like, just discover, do some yeah. research and yeah, sure, yeah short yeah. it. Um, and that, and a lot of intelligent people, and I know you mentioned this in, in your webinars and stuff that like, you know, the Midwestern people, like lawyers and dentists, they think they're too smart yeah. and they, they're the, they're losing traders actually, Correct. you know? So doctors it, make terrible traders. Yeah. And so like really smart people are attracted to short selling and they think they're smarter than what, like the, you know, what's going on. They're and smarter they in their profession, but not in the stock market. They, again, it's, you know, you have this podcast, you talk to everybody, you've studied a lot, you have an understanding of the industry as a whole, right? If you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, you have like this very small vision based on your own experiences, but you're missing all the rest. And so like you're using your small vision and you think that it's the big vision, but it's not, you're just narrow-minded. Yeah, so, um, and I, I, I you know, it's, it's like you gotta realize you don't know anything and just start from scratch. And I think that's that's why like your community, a lot of people start from scratch. They don't, no biases, it's like, I just wanna learn, I don't know anything. Like when I was watching even like Penny Stocking 101 or whatever, the yeah. video, like learning from absolute scratch and realizing I don't know anything with this. I got it's going to take a while well, to learn this it. Is, I was a philosophy major. The smartest man is the man who knows, know, that he exactly, knows nothing. Right? Exactly. So it's like having a very humble beginning. Like some people say like, oh, I can't be a millionaire. I have nothing. Fantastic. Like I can't, I can't be your next millionaire. I only have a thousand dollars. Fantastic. Starting low and realizing that you're a blank slate is actually easier than somebody. I have some like trust fund babies who like come to me and they're like, "Oh, I have five hundred thousand. This will be easy to become your next millionaire." And I'm like, "Do not trade. Stop thinking that you're smart. You got born into the right family, but you know nothing. You're gonna lose it all." And I've had like three or four trust fund kids, and I tell them like, "Even if you have five hundred thousand, start trading with five thousand." And they're like, "Yeah, I don't care. I spend five thousand like I'm." at a club on the weekend. I'm like, leave your entitled self at the door, just be humble. And they can't. I've never had a trust fund kid become successful. I tell them to start small, I tell them to be humble. In their entitled lives, they can't do it. And so that's one thing that's always baffled me. It's like, man, so people, you know, the, the, the number one thing in this is, is you gotta stick around. You gotta stick around to get the screen time, to get the experience, to absorb as much knowledge as you can. In the different markets, in the different strategies, yeah, in but the different so, sectors. But some people, they they get blown out in six months, two months, three months. Because they want it too quickly, right? I always say it's a marathon, not a sprint. I'm actually working on this video. I've been to like 14 countries in this video and I just say it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's like a two hour video. I'm gonna get it up to like three hours before I release it. They don't want it to be a marathon. No one wants to put in the time studying like you did. You succeeded and you're gonna to continue to succeed because you have the work ethic. Guess how, I have thousands of students. Guess how many sleep on a little yoga mat and study nonstop? One, maybe two. It, it was, uh, yeah, that sleep in the yoga mat. Man. <laughs> I don't wild. recommend that, but I'm saying that it's the work ethic that has driven your success. It'll continue to drive your success if you stay humble and you stay grinding. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily go that hard. Like you can take like, you know, Tim Bertani takes like weeks off or months off now where he's spending time with his family. Like yeah. you can, you can, you know, smell the roses a little bit, but again, it's that work ethic is that grinding that has led to your success. People who don't have a work ethic, it's almost impossible for them to be successful. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember like in your community, like, uh, Kyle, they're, everybody's open, man. It's kind, you know what I'm saying? So Kyle, he's, he's like, man, yeah, this is all, a lot of it's just, it's front loaded. Yeah. It's like two years two years you got to do like the way I saw it was like all right I'm doing like two or three years of work hardcore like I did with architecture for 10 years yeah. it's school and you mentioned this a lot too He's like you go to, people go to college they get you, like a brain surgeon goes to school you know med school becomes a resident the residents actually sleep in the hospital yeah and they have beds there for them and they've spent six figures on their education exactly. and still yeah. year six year seven year eight they're treated like nothing trading you don't have to put in six, seven, eight years. You don't have to pay six figures. Well, market tuition, you might have to pay six figures like you just did. But like, it happens quicker. So it's, it, it's quicker, but it's not as quick as people want it. People want, like, oh, I've studied, 
you know, like unsuccessful traders say like, yeah, I've studied your stuff. It doesn't work. And I was like, well, how much have you studied? And they're like, yeah, I've watched like 20 of your videos. I'm like, okay, you've watched like one one thousandth of what I've done. And they're like, yeah, but I get it. It's the gist. No, you don't. You need to go over every little thing. The biggest money that you'll make, the best lessons are in the smallest details that people glaze over because they don't take it seriously, right? Like yeah. you're trying to find an edge, whether long, short, you're trying to find your position size. There's a lot of little moving pieces that you have to you know, hone in on in the beginning. Then you understand it. Then after you have a few good trades or a few thousand good trades, you start to realize, okay, this is the path that I want to take. Yeah, and oh, and so now since I since you're here in LA, man, you know it's like, bro, like I've I've like it's surreal still. It's like <laughs> I used to think, man, one day imagine Tim's gonna because you That's visit it. all your, your successful students. I tried you, to, you, yeah, you, yeah. And I was like, man, if I this is all performance driven. If I reach a certain level, and you know, eventually it'll happen. So and look at it's happened. But I was gonna ask you, okay, so last question, I gotta we, go in like yeah, five minutes. Sure. Sorry okay, to cut for it sure. off. So like, um, are we still recording? Check it. Yeah, we check are. Check it. Check it again. You can never check it again. Yeah, it's recording. This is how like yeah. scared I am. Like it's like me in a trade, and I'm always wondering like, should I get out? So 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 yeah, you know, these days we have the, like the computer here, all this technology, all this stuff, and you know, you mentioned you gotta like figure out your position size, figure out this, all these little things you gotta tweak. So like in 1999, when you made that million, you got he had to call from the phone and the ship and all this. How did you manage all that? There was no audio books back then. You didn't have an iPhone. So I didn't have any guy. That was the problem. This is why I got started teaching because I remembered how frustrated I was. There were like websites like the Lion where they're showing it was like a message board and they're showing their entries but they're never showing their exits. And I was like, what's going on, guys? Like, That's not trading, right? So we created profitly because it was like, okay, show your entries and your exits. This shouldn't be that revolutionary of a concept, just showing everything. But in trading, you have so many fakes and frauds, like transparency is revolutionary. Still to this day, we used to have a lot more people on Profitly, but I was like, you have to show every trade if you're gonna have a chat room, if you're gonna have a newsletter. One by one, it drives people away. They're like, oh, I don't wanna show this. I'm like, well, I'm not interested. So for me, even though I didn't have a guide, I'm fortunate I have a photographic memory. So I can remember things very well. I still don't do like Excel spreadsheets. Um, my education yeah, really hurt it. with like no data. Like people like Jack Kellogg, Kyle Williams, Lucas, the short bear. I don't know if you've had yeah, him yeah. on. No, no, you should no, have no. him on. They've excelled because they get their Excel spreadsheets, they get the data, and then they can size up based on the data. And they have confidence because they're running all these data sheets. If I could go back in time, I would do that. I can't. I'm too old to learn. I'm just focused on teaching my stuff. But that's what you have to do. You have to model this in your head, either based on Excel spreadsheets or through trials and tribulation. I might have made a lot of money back in 99 and 2000, but I didn't have risk management. Obviously, I had my biggest loss in 2006, 2007. Crazy, it was seven years before I had like a big loss. But I, I had to do everything the hard way. And in this era, you just don't. Now you have the DVDs, the webinars, the chat rooms, the trade alerts, the commentary. You have successful student after successful student where you can model everything that they've done and you can go back in time and you can see what they're saying in chat. You can see everything. So there's many more tools, but again, it comes down to work ethic. How many people are actually gonna go through and look at all this stuff? Not many. I have thousands of students. Some people say, oh, you have thousands of students, you only have a few millionaires. I only have a few millionaires, but I only have a few hundred people who even are willing to go through everything. And then when you go through everything, then you have to trade and you have to put those theories into practice. So every step of the way, people don't want to study. They don't want to click. They don't want to put in the time to make excuses. Then even if they do study, maybe they have a loss. Maybe they break the rules. Maybe it's a slow market. So a million excuses, just like weeding people out. It's like a, if this were, I don't know if you saw All Quiet on the Western Front, there's like a new Netflix remake of the, the book. And it's like a really nasty look at war. And there's one guy running and like everyone's getting picked off around him. And it's just luck that like he makes it through. But that's like trading where you might start with a thousand traders and one by one, they're going to get picked off. This guy gives up. This guy got tired of trading small. So he went too big. He blew up. This guy just had a baby. So he can't trade anymore. He's got to focus on his baby. You know, there's endless excuses why you can't study hard and then put that into practice. Only a few are willing to do that. That's why I say obsession is a good thing. Some people say, oh, don't be obsessed, like have a work-life balance. No, no, yeah, have no said, balance. I, I took that to the heart. I was like, have no, no balance whatsoever and then buy yourself a life with your financial freedom. 
Absolutely, man. This is like Amazon. Like Jeff Bezos works his workers like hardcore. But Amazon has become one of the most successful, you know, companies in the world. Oh, he slept in the office, by the way. He did. And Elon Musk too. You know? So guess what? There's a pattern here yeah. to success. Yo, yeah. congrats on oh, everything. Man, We're gonna Thanks. do this every year. This is this is something new. Leave a comment below if you like this. We're gonna post the video. Is it still recording? Yeah, check it. it is. Make sure. Just double check. How long is it? 44 minutes. Good. So we're going to do yeah. this every year. We're going to do a 45-minute conversation. We're going to check in, and I'm going to see. We're going to watch as your office multiplies, and hopefully your success multiplies, but you got to stay committed. Don't burn out too much, and also don't you know go off the deep end. But take some time off every now and then. You've earned it. All right, yeah, I'm, yeah, for sure. Treat your family. That's my number one Absolutely. tip. The okay. best money I've spent is on my family. I'm going to flying back to and Miami. You bought your parents a house in Miami. Miami. I thought of doing that myself. I was like, that's one of my goals. Three places together, yeah. and we combine them actually. Oh so, man. Yeah. So it's nice, but yeah. you know wh whatever drives you. But you've earned it. You also just have to understand if you spend too much in the real world, then you can trade with less. So like you don't want to like have such a small trading account because now you have too many real world expenses. You want to keep them separate. Like you want to live humbly so that you can afford to trade well and keep them very separate. You don't want to be in a situation where it's like, you know, I'm living the life, but now I got to pay this like $30,000 a month rent. I got to make some good trades. That's a bad thing. Uh, I'm as, it doesn't seem like it maybe, but like I'm as frugal as it gets. It does seem like it, FYI. Wait, so, <laughs> you were sleeping on this yoga mat, man. But this is all, all my possessions are here and a tiny bit in my, my apartment. You can afford a little bit, but again, like it's it's a balancing act. Like you you choose how much you want to live, how well. Like I I encourage you to travel because travel I think gives you an education too, and you see more of the world. Come to Bali. We're going to be in Bali a lot in 2023. You're welcome That's to right. come. Uh, how many schools are you at now? We're at 112 right now. The goal is still a thousand. When did you make the thousand? goal uh this was 2016 but then there's no construction basically for two years so we've had like four years of That's construction good, man. and we're trying to ramp it up too and also i haven't made that much this year i'm just like taking losses and donating more but it's fine that's cool man um it's good to I'll donate to bali much. for sure man i'll All see right, you Tim. again congrats thanks study hard get obsessed